tell me about some of the behind the scenes magic that <laughs> you you and your teachers do to to make village home actually work what what goes on behind the scenes that people may not normally be aware of hmm. well we're we're a lot simpler than people think in a lot of ways because it's instead of being in a system that's like defining boundaries and stuff we're just like allowing mm. instead of instead of restricting mm. and um, so the scheduling process is a whole bear because right. we have to take into account all these individual needs and all that kind of stuff so that is like a juggernaut that is hard to understand mm -hmm. in terms of um, it's a very different game if you have a faculty of 10 yeah. and you own them i mean <laughs> we don't we don't own our teachers yeah. in the same way just like we don't own our learners yeah. in the same way and so i think the the biggest challenge is what we do to support individuals and individual families in a community context. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So communication pathways for families to connect with each other and get to know each other and for kids to build community and relationship with each other. There's a lot of invisible fabric that happens and it's been a real challenge since the pandemic mm, because a lot of our systems changed during the pandemic and we just are recovering. I mean, I know we've been out of it for a couple of years, but really this fall was the first fall that felt like normal, mm. it, you know, the way it used to be in terms of the amount of coming and going on the campus and parents there and not there and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that like we have things that we have programs inside our programs that are heroes in building community for us. Mm -hmm. And one of them is our middle grounds program, which was started from the idea of kids. So we have a little coffee shop called middle grounds mm. that serves snacks and coffee and drinks and really lunches like light lunches mm. too. And it runs out of our family lounge and the kids are working it and they work all aspects of it. Mm. And that is like a real a touchstone. Mm. The kids that end up working at middle grounds have special relationships as a team with each other. And, right. you know, they get a lot of gratitude from serving the community. We have a volunteer program that also involves the, the learners. So learners can volunteer. They can go assist in a class. Mm. They can work at middle grounds. They can be like a, and we have some art assistants that are specially focused on the special supplies of art and science and, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, so these avenues to um, contribute back to the community are super important. Another hero in this are our events that we do. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of social events for kids, for teenagers, for the whole family to come together and to get to know each other. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. the, that's the main thing. And then another huge program that we have that really makes a difference is the drama program, mm. because there's something about doing a performance together yeah. that yeah. is such a wonderful community builder and such a source of satisfaction and accomplishment that is kind of, it's kind of one of those sources of negative, I, I mean, external motivation that is not negative, right, right. you know? Like you're going to have an audience. And so you want to do your best. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the drama program has been really important for our community and our learners and building those opportunities to shine mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. in front of the community. And then I think another important one, and these are all programs that we like make happen and the community just kind of thinks, oh, it's just there by magic, but it's right. actually a lot of work. Um, exactly. <laughs> and um, a another thing is the different competitions and teams, oh, yeah. another form of external motivation that can be positive when it's 
managed by an adept coach. So, you know, our, our accomplishments and our history and things like mock trial and model United Nations and destination imagination and Lego robotics, mm-hmm. like these wonderful poetry out loud is a great one. The script spelling bee, like all of these things, we have a long history of participating in these organizations with with our teams from Village Home. Mm-hmm. This year we did Obob, the Oregon Battle of the Books mm. for the first time, which was really fun. And just like everything else, like mock trial, we just went to state a couple of weeks ago and placed fourth, which mm. is a great accomplishment. And we're often in on the podium, so to speak, at the state competition. Mm-hmm. And we've won state a couple of times. Mm-hmm. But the remarkable thing about that, I mean, the kids are awesome, but the remarkable thing is that our mock trial program is an all comers program. Right. You, you don't, you know, you just sign up. Mm-hmm. You don't have to audition. You don't have to, you know, anything like that. Once you sign up for mock trial, you are given a role mm-hmm. and because that's how the competition works. So, you know, some kids have a huge role, some kids have a little role, you know, I mean, whatever, but, but it's a real testament that our kids just like sign up and say, Oh, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Sure. Let's see what happens. As opposed to other schools that have very established programs that, that we compete with very well, by the way. And, you know, they have, they have, you know, four teams and they have a, a junior team and then you get right. placed up here. And then if you make it, you get in here, you know, that whole thing. And so it's very different. Yeah. And, yeah. and again, I think the difference is that the kids feel like, oh, I'm choosing to be here. Exactly. You know, exactly. I, I'm choosing this work and I understand that it's going to, that it's going to be interesting to me or it's going to be helpful to me or it's going to be part of my growth that I want to take on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because I did high school sports in traditional mainstream schools. Yeah. And so, you know, you have the whole, you know, sophomore team, junior team, senior team, you know, like, or the varsity. Yeah. I guess JV, yeah. yeah. Yeah, JV, varsity. Yeah. But it's sort of, a you know, these these kind of competitive distinctions. And, and, you know, you're, you're in a setup where, and and then that gets translated into those kinds of, you know, the mock trial one where you're, you know, you've got graded teams and all that. It's like, but, but what you're doing once again is one of those things where you're saying, you know, that that's not who we are. That's not how we operate. Yeah. I mean, the most important thing is starting with the student. Mm -hmm. Are, are you interested in this? Do you want to do this? Mm -hmm. And with something like mock trial, it's multifaceted. There's some kids that want to do it because they like the performance, like the drama side of it. And there's some kids that do it because they like the the law side of it Mm -hmm. and they want to understand the law. So they come at it for all different reasons. And, you know, and it's all good. Mm -hmm. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.